Hello everyone, welcome to Historical Trash Box where we talk about history in the trashiest way. I'm going to be alone yet again, but you know me as Dedrick, and today we are going to give background on the Cold War, describing on the history, a, a brief history of the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, don't judge me, I got Wikipedia pages up, but I did check, they're in public domain, so yeah, I'm allowed to use this. I couldn't be bothered to make one because I thought of this idea a bit too late in the week, and this will hopefully be uploaded by Saturday. So yeah, there's uh, <clears throat> there's that. Anyway, we're gonna start on the United States of America. I mean, if you live on Earth, you probably know what this country is, unless you're the age of three. So as we know, the United States of America was, so a bit of background, in roughly 1770-ish, the British and French were fighting, so like this picture down here was a good amount of, uh, it describes it pretty well. So you have the British who owned New England, which was this section, the 13 colonies, and France owned this big old chunk right here, big chunk. And they're fighting over this bet, which was basically the state of Ohio. So about here. And they ended up ended up being a seven-year scuffle. And, well, the French lose. And the British basically earn all the land except for Florida, which Spain get to connect through Louisiana and all that stuff. So in about 1775... There were a bunch of people that weren't happy with the new taxes that England were putting on the 13 colonies here. So, they decided, like, hey, why don't we start a new country? One that doesn't have these taxes that are horrible. Like, as an example for a tax, they had a stamp task tax, which basically means any piece of paper that someone made would have to have a stamp on it, and it would cost a couple pence. But still, that was annoying, because a couple pence was actually a lot back then. So, yeah. In, uh, on July 4th, 1776, the United States declared declared their independence. And over the next, like, eight years, yeah, about eight years or some somewhat, the United States would somehow, somehow manage to beat the British. And the British were the strongest country in the world. It would be the equivalent of a, a bodybuilder fighting a six-year-old. I think you know who's going to, but that six-year-old has gun. So, yeah, bullets beat strength. So, yeah, the United States declared their independence, and, well, we had a bunch of presidents. They kicked the Indians out of their land, put them out in this area. They made Louisiana purchasing, manifest their destiny, and just moved westward. American, Mexican secession, California genocide, all that good stuff. Now we're in the 1850s. The British and... The Spanish and the French are getting off of the United States back and letting them do their own thing. And now, <clears throat> voice crack beyond belief. Um, now we have to deal with good old civil war. Civil war happens in almost any country. It's been happening since countries were even declared as a thing. And this one was a pretty bad one. So the reason why it started is because there were a bunch of southern states... And there were northern states. Northern states, they were more manufactured and didn't have to use slaves to do their hardship. While the South did. So, the South were getting kind of mad that it was it was seen as improper in the North that slaves couldn't be used. And they thought Abraham Lincoln, the new president at the time, was going to take, going to take their slaves. And well, yeah, it, that was they weren't going to take their slaves. They were just going to give the slaves more uh, more uh, freedom. And that, in 1861, South Carolina and a bunch of other southern states declared their independence, declared their independence from, uh, from the United States of America. And over the next four years, Abraham Lincoln and all, the, and all those generals would have to go through the five years that was the Civil War. One of the hardest times in our history, as you know. I'm an, an American, have been for a long time, even though I'm Mexicanos, yeah. So, in roughly, like, I think it was March of eight, 1865, um, the Confederacy 
declared their independence. Sorry, I have literal. I'm going based off of my personal knowledge, and I'm not reading off of this. I'm just using this as like a as a little bit of a guide. I'm not reading straight off of this, obviously. But uh, yeah, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated about 13, 14 days after after the Confederacy surrendered, when Robert E. Lee at uh, a approximate courthouse, I can't remember the name, surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. And over time, for over the next couple, couple days, there was a bunch of Western states like um, Texas over here and Louisiana that said, oh, this war ain't over. We're keep going. But everyone knew up here. So basically the, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't bring this up earlier, but basically the Confederate states were, so we got West Virginia here. They were actually broke off from Virginia. Virginia, these two used to be connected, but the North decided to take take this area, and a lot of people in this area wanted to be still be in the North, so in about 1863, they broke off from Virginia and formed a new state, West Virginia, and joined the North. But yeah, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, all joined the Confederacy. And only three slave states did not join the Confederacy, those states being Missouri, Kentucky, and Maryland. So there's that. So after the war ended, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, and we went into the Reconstruction period. Which, yes, we it was hard to do this. I mean, after Civil War, it's obviously hard to do this. And during the Reconstruction period, um, good old black people and all other uh, minorities, I should say, got their in freedom. They were no longer allowed to be called slaves due to the 13th Amendment, right? Right, the 13th Amendment? Yeah, the 13th Amendment. And so, but they did, they did, they gave them freedom, but they didn't say discrimination against black people in public or making laws so, so black people can't do certain things or minorities can't do certain things that they didn't, that wasn't in the 13th Amendment. So in the southern states, the states I just mentioned, they all still had laws which segregation would go on to go on to have a big. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I'll have to take a quick drink of my soda. That's pretty diluted. Uh, soda, soda, right? Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, they had to. Um, okay, what was it going? On? Ah, segregation. So up until about the nineteen sixties. Segregation was a big problem, so the um, the thing most people think of when they refer to segregation, not everybody obviously, but most people like me is what I think of, is thinking of the water fountain situation. So almost all water fountains during during that section in southern states, where um you had the ones that were for only white people, and those were usually kept pretty clean with maybe a little rust or whatever around around the little spout or behind the back. Well, you had the coloreds only one, which was it's pretty bad. Like it had barely any maintenance done to it. Like maybe a quick scrub with some soap and water on it, but that's about it. If if at all. If any cleaning. Immigration was also in uh, the United States. Obviously, we all know what Ellis Island was. Millions upon millions of immigrants from Europe, from South America, any places, had to either come from the East or the West, from the Pacific. And it was a tough time because we didn't, I guess we didn't really know how to, how to uh, immigrate people into our country. But, yeah, it is a pretty bad time. A lot of families were separated. Uh, a lot of people were sent back because they didn't meet meet the the uh, expectation, which was to uh, to be healthy. And you also had to be at least eighteen years eighteen years old and provide a bunch of private information to the people. You had to be healthy. You had to be. You had to be looking for a job, like have an expectation of what your job is going to be. And if you didn't meet, even if you didn't meet one of those, you'd be turned back and probably die. Also, this was during time, this was also during a time during industrialization right here. 
Sorry, I cannot English very well. Usually I'd have a break, but hey, I'm the main speaker today. Eh. But uh, yeah, enduralization, that word, whatever, was a big thing. We had people like Cornelius Vanderbilt, uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller, and Andrew Cargan, they and J.P. Morgan, they all had major, uh, like, in certain sections of the economy. They were all big people, and a lot of money, like, from after the Civil War, like, roughly the 1880s, a lot of people were growing and growing and growing and growing in, uh, in the economy, and the stock market became an amazing way to get money if you invested in the right thing, like, such as... Investing in, I can't remember what Cornelius Vanderbilt but what he did, railroads, railroads and shipping. So if you, if you went to a stock market and did that for them, guess what? Hey, you get money. And we're moving on to the World War One and the Great Depression. World War One, United States didn't really join in until, I think it's called the Lusitania was sank by German U-boats, and so. Uh, good old Woodrow Wilson said to say to the Germans, like, you killed our citizens, we're going to kill you. That's exactly what they did. They joined in 1917. The war ended in November of, in November 1918. And, boom, United, whenever the United States joins a war, that, that scale completely goes the opposite way. On, yeah. So, it com- it goes the complete opposite way, like, it may be even there, but as soon as the United States goes on one side, it completely just drops to the other side. Sorry if that was loud. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That hurt my finger. But you also got the 1920s, which was a time of prohibition and lavish luxury for the upper folks. Yeah. And 1929 rolled around. And you want to know what happened then? Great Depression. People kept investing in the stock market, and it co- and it kept growing. And then, and then a bunch of people in a corner in the stock market uh, floor was saying, "Wait a minute, it'll keep it'll keep growing, but how far can it grow?" And and they're like, "Oh crap! Everyone, sell your crap!" And it began dropping until it plummeted. It did it a little drop, and then it plummeted. It rose a little bit, plummeted. And then Herbert Hoover was no help. He he raised taxes, thinking that would help, and then the Great Depression happened, where one in four people were out of a job, and everybody was was living in what classifies as poverty. Literally. Everybody except for about 2% of the population. And that was going on until about 1934-ish, when my man, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in my opinion, one of, if not the greatest president in our, in the history of our nation. He was good. I liked him. Well, I, I wasn't alive when he was around, but I liked what he did. He signed, he signed the New Deal, which allowed the economy to boom back again. And when World War II came around, yeah, when World War II came around, we were, unemployment dropped below like 4%. And that was, whew, that was great. And usually, and the unemployment were mostly people that either had disabilities and couldn't really work. And what I mean by unemployment plummeting, either people working in war factories or going out to fight in Germany in the Pacific, and in and Japan in the Pacific. But after World War II, there was another country. They were called the Soviet Union, and you might know them for the memes, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of them. On I the only, they were horrible. They were horrible. We may make this meme like, oh, we support them. Like, we shouldn't. They were horrible. But, nonetheless, 
they were an important part in history. Well, a needless but important part in history. So let's move on to them. We got the Soviet Union here. Mother Russia. So they they are going to be a small part in this. I'm seriously probably going to be able to sum them up in like five minutes. Well, okay, maybe not five minutes. Maybe give it like ten minutes. Don't quote me on that, but this is previous me talking about them. But anyway, yeah, yeah, besides point, besides point. Soviet Union was officially, officially became a country in about 1922. Before that, we had the Russian Revolution, which wasn't all that exciting, I guess. Because if, if you look at it, it was, no, just, just no. I mean, there were there were two major parts in the nineteen seven in the nineteen seventeen Russian Revolution: the October and the February Revolution. The February one was a bit more deadly, while the October one, all the paintings and all the articles say, "Oh, it was big, it was powerful." The Russians stood up. The Russian people stood up to the monarchy. No, you didn't. You seriously just walked into important political buildings and you you just took them. And then when you finally went to the capital, you were meant to fight people called the Battalion of the Death. And guess what? After like 10, 15 minutes of fighting, they gave up with like 20 casualties, mostly on their side. So yeah... Now, it was a pretty boring time. The the war that happened after it, the the uh, Russian Civil War, which was main was the Bolsheviks or the majority, if you're speaking English, they were um they were uh <clears throat> sorry need some more drink. My diluted Coca Cola from Raising Cane's not sponsored. Pretty good. But yeah, they were, um... Alright, where I was? Oh, just after Civil War. They were fighting anti-Soviet. And it... Anti-Soviets. And it was... An, it was like six years of war. Right? Yeah, six years of, uh... Of war. And then in 1923, the Civil War ended. But you want to know what? The man that was the leader of this whole country for a while, he died. This man right here. That is not, that is not a good picture. Of, I was not expecting that one. Jesus. That, that is not a good picture of him. But Vladimir Lenin, he did all that work to fight to get the Russian Revolution going. Fuck. Suppressed all civil war act activists. He got shot. He had six strokes. And then he died. Mm-hmm. That's a leader for you. But then you got Joseph Stalin. And if you know anything about Stalin, he killed more people than Hitler did. You know that? Yep. He killed more people than Hitler. And we all think Hitler did. Did horrible. He killed like 8 million people, but don't get me wrong, 8 million people is like a lot. But then, hold on, Stalin, Stalin, yeah, he was a, he was horrible. Stalin was a, he was horrible. He killed more people than Hitler. He didn't care for his people at all. He said he did, he didn't, had statues built after him, such as Stalingrad. And he was, he was the leader during World War II. He suppressed any attempts at a revolution in the Soviet Union vigorously, like killing people that didn't even deserve it. But that's just a little bit of the Soviet Union. In our next episode, we're going to show you a bit more. So you don't have to stay tuned to that. We will get that out next week. This was just like a prequel. All right? I love you all, and I'll see you next time.